In this unit, we're going to talk about the challenge of translating individual statements or individual instructions from symbolic to binary code. Now, the general problem that we are facing is developing an assembler that translates program from symbolic uh, hack uh, language into uh, binary hack code. And in order to write such an assembler, we have to know how to deal with uh, white space, uh, instructions, and symbols. Now, in order to make our life easier, we decided to defer the treatment of symbols to a later stage. And we also described previously how to handle white space. Basically, we're going to ignore white space. So what remains uh, is a program that contains instructions only. A instructions and C instructions without symbols. So in order to write an assembler that can translate such a program into binary code, we have to know how to translate A instructions and C instructions. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss next. So let us begin with A instructions. Here is uh, uh, the general rule and the um, uh, syntax rule of how to put together an A instruction and an example. And here is the same uh, uh, instruction expressed in uh, binary code. Notice that uh, the opcode of an A instruction is zero. This is the first uh, red zero bit that you see uh, uh, in the example at the bottom right. By the way, the colors are completely meaningless, and I use them only uh, to improve uh, our communications. You know, once it gets into uh, actual implementation, uh, the colors once again play no role whatsoever. So, how to translate from uh, symbolic to binary when it comes to an A instruction? Well, if you think about it, the only challenge is to do something with this value. So basically, if the value is a decimal constant, all we have to do is compute uh, the binary representation of, of this value, add as many zeros as we need in order to turn it into a 15-bit constant, add or append uh, the zero opcode, and, uh, and, and that's what is uh, uh, needed, a 16-bit uh, uh, representation of this, uh, of this instruction. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but obviously we have to do it. What if uh, value is a symbol? Well, I just want to uh, uh, remind you what, uh, what we said earlier. We're going to, uh, to deal with symbols uh, later on. So translating A instructions uh, is, uh, is uh, something which is not terribly complicated, but once again, it takes uh, uh, some programming. All right, what about C instructions? Well, uh, C instructions also have uh, a symbolic uh, manifestation and, uh, and a binary manifestation. And there's a set of tables, uh, so to speak, that describe the mapping from symbolic mnemonics into their binary representations. So these are the rules of the game when it comes to translating C instructions. So how do you actually do it? I think the easier way to, uh, to describe the uh, translation process is to do it using an example. So suppose we are giving this uh, 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 single uh, C instruction and we have to translate it into binary code. Well, before we go on, I want to remind you that every C instruction consists of three fields. So in the example that we have here, um, the uh, MD uh, mnemonic is the uh, destination field or the value of the destination field in this particular instruction. Then comes D plus one, which is the value of the comp or computational uh, computation field. And we also have a jump field, which happens to be null. You know, we don't have a jump uh, uh, instruction here, so uh, the jump is uh, null. So implicit in what I'm saying is the assumption that we can somehow take this source instruction and decompose it into these uh, three fields. And indeed, this is something that is going to be done by an element of our assembler called parser. The parser is going to take a, a, a source a statement or instruction written in a, a symbolic code and chop it into three individu individual fields. And then we can inspect every one of these fields in isolation and act on it. And that's exactly 
what I'm going to do next. So uh, let us begin to uh, put together the string of characters that will end up representing the binary code of MD equals D plus 1. We can do it in, in many different ways, and here is one of them. Uh, focusing on the target uh, uh, expression, we see that every C instruction begins with three ones when it comes to, uh, to the binary flavor of C instructions. So we initialize the string that we are building with three ones. That's, that's what we do when we get started. Next, we focus, if we want, we focus on the next uh, seven bits uh, that we have to uh, create. And these seven bits correspond to the comp field. Now, the comp field happens to be D plus 1. Once again, I assume that I have access to this uh, field. I can easily retrieve it. I see that it's D plus 1. And if it's D plus 1, I can look it up in the relevant table. I look up this mnemonic, and I see that it corresponds to uh, an A bit, which is 0, and to 6 uh, control bits, which are 0 and 5 ones. So putting these uh, bits together, I generate uh, the 7-bit uh, value 00111111, and I append it to the string that I gradually uh, build here. All right, uh, the next thing to do is uh, focus on the next part of the instruction, which corresponds to the destination. So I look up the value of my destination field. It happens to be MD. I consult the relevant uh, table, and I see that the MD mnemonic corresponds to 011. I take this 011 value, I append it to the string that I gradually build, and I've completed the, uh, the, uh, uh, the synthesis of these two fields uh, together. Moving along, uh, the remaining three bits correspond to the jump directive, I look up the value of the jump directive in my source uh, instruction. I see that it's null. I look up null in the relevant table, and I see that it corresponds to the three bits 0, 0, 0. I take these bits, append them to the end of the string, and voila, we have managed to translate the uh, uh, symbolic instruction into its uh, binary equivalent. As you see, um, everything that I do here is text processing, and in, in some languages it is called string processing. I have a source string, which I analyze in some way, and I have a, a target string, which I build you know, in some gradual process. And every high-level language has the capability to, uh, to do such a string processing, and that's exactly what you'll do when you actually write uh, the assembler. Now, uh, when we say that we generate binary code, uh, there may be some misunderstanding here, so let me uh, clarify it. We basically generate uh, a text file that contains of, uh, uh, th which, is, which consists of two characters only, zero and one. But they are treated as characters, as ASCII or Unicode characters. So we have this text file that we write, which consists of zeros and ones only, and later on we're going to load this text file into the computer. And once we load it into the computer, it becomes real uh, zeros and ones, uh, so to speak. All right, so this basically concludes the uh, translation of C instructions. So with that in mind, here is the overall assembly logic. We are given a text file, and this text file contains all sorts of characters that hopefully represent a hack program written in symbolic hack code. So how do we translate it into binary? Well, uh, we process this file, and uh, we begin marching through it. And for each instruction, or for each line in this file, we first of all pass the instruction. We break it into its underlying fields. So if we have an A instruction, uh, we have uh, the at sign and a value. We take this value, and we re-express it in uh, uh, binary code. If it's a C instruction, we split the instruction into its uh, three uh, uh, fields, comp, dest, and, uh, and uh, jump. 
And also, uh, for every one of these fields, we generate the uh, corresponding uh, binary, uh, binary bits. And then we assemble all these codes that we uh, uh, created into a single 16-bit instruction. And we write this instruction to an output file, which is not seen here in the picture. But uh, the assembler creates this empty file at the beginning and begins to populate it with uh, 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 lines, each line being a sequence of or a string of 16 zeros and ones. So this is the overall process of translating a hack program, a program that consists of only A and C instructions without symbols. If you do all this, then you will manage to uh, uh, create uh, an assembler that can translate uh, programs into binary code, and everything looks uh, uh, very nice indeed. And I'd hate to be a, a party uh, spoiler, but there's a big uh, uh, gap that we haven't closed yet, and this is the fact that the source code contains no symbols. We have managed to, uh, uh, to design an assembler that uh, translates uh, symbolless programs, but we still have to close this gap of dealing with symbols. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next unit.